This is the Rio that the government wants you to see. Postcard panoramas. Lazy days at the beach. And then there's this. Across the city, there's violence, evictions and demolition as Brazil prepares for the Football World Cup and the Olympics. This is one of the favelas being destroyed. Antonio Clausio and his wife, Ana Lucia, have just watched their home being demolished and they're devastated. This was Antonio's home. He was told to vacate just this morning. By the afternoon, this. Until the very moment the bulldozers moved in, Ana Lucia had been desperately negotiating with city authorities about their eviction. They've been offered the equivalent of 17,000 US dollars for their home. But Antonio believes it was worth at least double that amount. So a gente fica chateado é porque não é o valor que a gente bem queria e também é a coisa que a gente sente uma tristeza né na derrubando a casa da gente, o patrimônio da gente que a gente suou muito para adquirir. Their favela is called Tanki, a small, close-knit community in an unfortunate location part of it right in the path of a planned Olympic highway. Now, everywhere I look, there's destruction. 40 families have already had their homes destroyed. For Maria Estelle, it's already too late. Three generations of her family lived here. Aqui era minha sala, aqui era o quarto da minha filha. E daqui para Maria says the Rio authorities paid her about seven thousand dollars for her house. Um, well, we've been following it very closely uh, the last... Teresa Williamson is the executive director of Catalytic Communities, an NGO that works closely with the residents of Rio's favelas. Rights here in Tanki are being violated primarily in two senses. First is they weren't given uh, enough warning. They weren't given enough opportunity to negotiate, to participate in the process. They weren't given an opportunity as a community to discuss and know their rights. They were told outright that if they talked to a lawyer, they would receive less compensation. Uh, they were told that if they you know, waited, they would receive less compensation. All of these things are pure lies. The government refutes such claims and points to new public housing projects like this one as an alternative to the city slums. No way. Rio Housing Secretary Pierre Batista is happy to show me around. This project here of moradia is a project very strong because it brings benefits benefits to families. Here is a excellent excellent train, everything is very close. Mesmo famílias que viviam em condições sem estrutura nenhuma, sem condições decentes, e hoje moram aqui numa estrutura dessa, com escola, saúde, tudo, ginásio, praça do conhecimento, tem toda a estrutura. The residents certainly seem happy with their new home. Vocês estarão aqui também, nessa maravilha aí. Isso mesmo, é isso que nós queremos. Eu quero a minha filha aqui. But not all those displaced from the slums are able to move here. In order to be eligible, they need to be registered for employment 
and be in a position to pay back federal loans for the property. 900 At this launch of yet another public housing project, Rio de Janeiro's dynamic mayor, Eduardo Peyers, is touting the benefits of a life beyond the favelas. But some here have come from areas marked for demolition and they want to stay right where they are. Altair Gomeris leads the residents of a well-known favela called Vila Otadromo. Unlike the tanky residents, they're well organized and vocal. This new Rio for the poor looks impressive. But I wanted to ask the mayor about what had happened to Antonio and Ana Lucia in Tanki Favela and their $17,000 compensation. It was a house or a business? I mean, I don't know. It was a two-story house. I, 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 I mean, I, I, I don't know the specific case. This, I'm, I'm giving you the specific case. It's 30, it's 30, yeah, but that, I don't know. That's, that's not really enough, enough to, to buy a new car, let alone what, a new house. Again, again, what we always do is uh, try to negotiate. So I don't know this but specific case. They might not case. be in a good position to negotiate. Yeah, I mean, every time, no, I mean, every time uh, we started, I mean, almost three years ago, so we've been negotiating this whole time. So, I mean, it has different situations. Obviously, sometimes uh, not good negotiations might happen. And every time I'm told, I get, I'm aware of these negotiations, what I try to do is intervene. Fiova está rolando tudo com muita calma, muita conversa. Tem grita, sorrisos, a gente vai em frente. Vamos ver o apartamento depois. A gente quer. Vem cá, mulher. Deixa eu ver. Vem cá. The mayor is keen to show his model apartments to the favela residents and the media. <laughs> but Altair, a builder by trade, isn't impressed. <laughs> Alguns moradores vêm aqui e enchem os olhos. Eu quero que vocês vá depois que tiver construído para ver se é isso tudo aqui. He says he won't be moving in. Não quero nada, eu não quero nada disso aqui. Isso para mim não me enche os olhos. Entendeu? Nada disso me enche os olhos. I'm keen to see Vila Otadromo, where Altair comes from and I start my visit here at Pedro Franklin's house. You can see why residents are resisting the removals. It also makes me rethink my notions of a so-called slum. Isso aqui a cada dia nós temos um visual diferente, né? Uma coisa a natureza próxima. Os pássaros voando, sobrevoando aqui. Aí eu já estou entristecido só imaginar que possa acontecer alguma coisa, né? É de cortar o coração mesmo. Pedro's been living here with his family for 24 years, and he's not about to go. Construiu com muita luta, eu posso deitar e descansar, porque eu não roubei, não fiz nada demais, eu construí com meu ordenado, com meu suor, passando sacrifícios, eu, a minha esposa, Ela lutou aqui comigo, agora chega alguém para dizer que somos invasores, é impossível aceitar uma situação como essa. From his roof garden, you can see just how close the Olympic Games construction is. Futuro Parque Olímpico, né? Onde já existe o Teatro de Arena.
One of the remarkable aspects of this favela is that the locals actually have a 99-year lease on their properties from the state. At the nearby residence centre, Altair shows me his documents. The government says that this is our land. If we were to invade, we would not have this document. First, this is in the Constitution. When we occupied, it was an invasion. But it became legal once the state government recognized our rights and gave us this land. The apartment is not giving up. Altair is not giving up. He and his fellow residents have mobilised mass support. And he's leading a legal challenge to the mayor's plans to demolish the favela. If Rio hadn't been selected to host the Olympics and the World Cup, uh, there wouldn't have been enough political clout to, in a democracy, as we live in here in Brazil, to undergo this kind of eviction process. This, is only a, this can only happen uh, because the Olympics creates a deadline and it forces a set of uh, goals. And while favela residents struggle to keep their homes, violence continues. Away from the tourists, the reshaping of the city grinds on, raising many questions about the authorities' grand vision. Back in Tanki, Antonio is facing a different sort of question. Where to sleep tonight? His stepdaughter may provide a bed for now, but the future looks bleak. É difícil, né? Ver a a casa da gente no chão, ver sobre o terreno assim, também. A gente fica sem palavras.